Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm here glad to be in the house of the Lord. Let's go to the Son of God from the Let's go to the Son of God from the Let's the the Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 5 and 7, La palabra de Dios dice en Mateo capítulo 28, 5 al 7, dice así. It says, And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, and I have told you. Amen. And today we are glad because we know that we serve a risen king. Amen. Nosotros estamos bien gozosos hoy porque sabemos que sirvimos un rey que ha resucitado entre los muertos. Amen. We serve a risen king. Come on, church. Not just today, but every day. Amen. No nomás hoy, pero cada día sirvimos un rey que ha resucitado con poder y autoridad. With power and authority, he has risen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord God, we worship you today. We praise you. We magnify you, Lord God. We thank you for your presence that is in this place, Lord Jesus. We ask God that you would have your way today in this place. Señor, te pedimos que tú, Señor, hagas tu voluntad en este lugar hoy. Mientras que te adoramos y te glorificamos, Señor. Que tu nombre sea glorificado y exaltado. En el nombre de Jesús. Amen. Hallelujah.
y vives y vives para siempre. No te persigua, mi persigua es el retiro de él.
We want to welcome everyone this morning to Community Grace Center. I pray that you have a blessed Sunday today and that you feel a touch of God this morning. You just get one touch of God in your life, your whole life can change forever. Amen. How about if you don't know that person, introduce yourself. Good morning and welcome to the City Art Gallery. I'm so excited that you're able to be here this morning. The reason I ask the three of you to be here is because you are my best art student. <laughs> and I'm sure you already know, and I'm just glad that you're here. So today's portrait we're going to see is the Portraits of Freedom. So all I ask is that you just walk around the exhibit, enjoy your time, but pay special attention to the paintings, okay? Teacher, will there be any homework assignments on this? Bro, why you gotta keep asking that, bro? Come on. No, 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 it's okay. And not at all. Like I mentioned um, before, is that we're just here to have fun and just enjoy the painting, okay? Okay. All right, so we're going to make it all the way to the beginning. So this is how much emotion you can put in the beginning. Oh, great. Oh, and again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know, okay? Oh, yes. Oh, that's an excellent question, Angel. It's a very an interesting piece. Actually, an op ab so, excuse me. so as you see over here, the darker strokes, that represents a dark time. It's almost as if you can feel the pain and the hurt and see the emotions that these people are going through. But then, if you see these lighter strokes on this side, well, that, that represents freedom. So as they go from dark to light, it's as if the bondage, the chains are being free, and it's, they're just being free from what they've done in the past, and it's just, it's just very, 
Great question. Excellent question. Thank you.
And this is how the scriptures read. Yes, he may. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Así que, si el Hijo os libere, seréis libertamente libres, verdaderamente libres. Amen. I'm going to talk to you for just 10, 15 minutes on this thought. Le voy a hablar por 10 o 15 minutos sobre este pensamiento. A portrait of freedom. Una portada de libertad. A portrait of freedom. Una portada de libertad. Can we just bar our heads for just a moment? Lord, we thank you for the presentation. We thank you, Lord, for the music, the signing, the skateboard, and the message that it conveyed, Lord Jesus. And there is freedom because yeah. of what you've done for us on the cross. And I pray, God, in the next few minutes, as we deliver your word, Lord, that your word will find a place in someone's heart today, God, that will have an impact for the rest of their body. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may take your seats. There was a, a little boy that caught some birds. Había un niño pequeño que había capturado pájaros. He was out there playing, playing in the field. Estaba allá afuera jugando en el campo. And it was a field next to a church. Y era un campo al lado de una iglesia. And he caught some birds and, and he put them in an old cage. Y capturó unos, unas aves y las puso en una, en una, en una jaula. And as, a, as he was passing by the church, y mientras pasaba por la iglesia, the pastor comes out and sees this little boy holding the cage of birds. Mientras pasaba por la iglesia, salió el pastor y vio que el niño pasaba por sus su jaula de aves. The pastor says, "Young man." Y el pastor le dice, "Joven." What are you doing with those birds? ¿Qué estás haciendo con esos con esas aves? Well, I'm going to play with them. Bueno, voy a jugar con ellas. But these birds, um, they're not singing. Pero estos, estos aves no están cantando. And I wanted to hear them sing. Les quería escuchar cantar. But they're not singing birds. Pero no son aves cantando. So I think I'm just going to feed them to my cat. Entonces creo que no más les voy a, a dar a mi gato. And the pastor looked at those poor little birds. Y el pastor vio a esas aves pobres. They were shaking. They were nervous. Y estaban And as though they could understand what the little boy was saying. And so the pastor said, let me tell you what I'll do. I'm going to give you two dollars. 
if you give me those pearls. Now, this is from a long time ago. I don't think that kid will take two dollars. Maybe twenty dollars. But not two dollars. So this was from a long time ago. So he said, I'm going to give you two dollars if you give me those birds. And the little boy said, well, that, that doesn't make any sense. Why do you want to buy these birds? They don't even sing. You're making a big mistake, mister. But if you want to buy them, then they're yours. Pero si las quieres comprar, aquí está. So he gave the two dollars. Entonces le dio los dos dólares. And the pastor took the, the cage of birds. Y el pastor tomó la jaula de aves. And he walked around the back of the church. Y caminó hacia afuera, hacia la, atrás, la parte trasera de la iglesia. And he opened the cage. Y abrió la jaula. And the birds began to stretch their wings. Y las aves empezaron a estirar sus alas. And they began to fly. Y empezaron a volar. And soon. Y pronto, he could hear the sounds of birds singing. Pudo escuchar los sonidos de aves cantando. There's something about being free that makes you want to sing. There's something about being free that makes you want to rejoice. So the following Sunday, the pastor came to church and he brought the empty bird cage. And he placed it on the pulpit. And he said to the church, tell me what it is like to be free. Tell me what it is like to be free. Let me ask you a question this morning. Do you know what it is like to be free? That's a very good question. Do you know what it is like to be free? A, a very simple explanation is this. Freedom is to be released. That's freedom. Like the birds. To be released from something that is a heavy burden. That is freedom at its most simple explanation. And this morning I ask you this question. What do you have to be free from today? So let, let's be real here. We're going to be real here for just, just a moment. I'm, I'm not going to mess up your Easter, okay? Some of you are going to go and barbecue do whatever. I know you will. It's okay. I'm not going to mess up your Easter, but I just want you to listen. And we're going to be real here for just a moment. We all have differences, right? Okay. Some of us here were raised differently. Some of you came from, from you know, parents that were very, you know, very hard and strict. Okay, or maybe you have parents that maybe were, you know, they, they were all easy, you know. You know, it's okay, you know, as long as you're back by three in the morning, it's okay. Some of us, uh, you know, like certain foods, right? Okay, and maybe something that I like eating. Alex doesn't like to eat. Who likes sushi? Oh, that's half the trick. I don't. Okay. We have differences here. Because you like sushi, I don't like sushi, so we're not good here. Okay. But we got differences. All right. Now, some of us are more fortunate than others. Okay. Doesn't mean that we're not blessed. Because, you know, because the choice is made, we're, 
Maybe we, we became a little bit more fortunate than others. So, so there, are, there are real differences that exist. Language differences. Maybe the color of our skin is different. Our hair is different. There are differences that do exist. Not just here, but everywhere in the whole world. But there is something that every person has in common. Even though we're all different, in many ways, we all have something in common. First of all, we all have the same Creator. There is a God that loves all of us. <laughs> and lastly, we are all sinners. I didn't expect you to clap for that. <laughs> That's okay. But you know what? That's honest truth. We're all sinners. Okay. Do you know what Jesus said? He said that we have all sinned and come short of God's expectation. No matter how good we can try to be, no matter how amazing you are, we will never meet God's expectation. Because we have a sinful nature. We tend to fall into sin rather than falling into righteousness. So God, God is like a parent. He is a parent. He is our heavenly father. And as a parent, he knows what is best for our life. And, and, and I'm a parent, some of you here are parents, and, and I'm sure as a parent, you want what's best for your kids. And so God knows what's best for our life. But sometimes as kids, what do we do? We do the exact opposite of what Papa and Mama God. Sometimes we do the exact opposite of what God wants for us. And we do things that harm our body and it harms our mind and it hurts our heart. And, and we damage relationships because of our choices. And so doing, doing the opposite of what God wants for our life is called a sin. That's what it's called. It's called a sin. It's going against you know, God's plan and the purpose for our life. So, what does it mean to be a servant of sin? Jesus said this, John chapter 8, verse 34 and 35 and 37. This is what Jesus said. Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, Whosoever committed sin is a servant of what? Sin. Okay? So you commit sin, you live in sin, or whatever it is, you are a servant to sin. Verse 35. Verse 34. Sorry, verse 34. Jesus les respondió, De cierto, de cierto os digo, que todo aquel que hace pecado, esclavo, es del pecado. Verse 35. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. 
y el esclavo no queda en la casa para siempre. El hijo sí queda para siempre. So, in other words, take, take in these two verses here. En otras palabras, tomando estos versos. When we live in sin, cuando vivimos en el pecado, we are servants to sin. Son sirvientes del pecado. We are slaves. Somos esclavos to sin. Al pecado. Yeah. That's what it is. Esto es lo que es. You are a slave to it. Es un esclavo a eso. There is pleasure in sin. Hay placer en el pecado. That's a true statement. Eso es un eso es una there can, yes, there could be pleasure in sin. Y puede haber placer en el pecado. But that pleasure is short lived. Pero ese placer es corto. It is but for a short season. Es nomás para una época. Because de it gets old really fast. Porque se envejece muy rápido. And in time, y en tiempo, sin brings a heavy load. El pecado trae una carga grande. It brings a heavy burden that, that you have to carry. What am I talking about? Well, there's the load of guilt. And so, when we feel that way, you know, I'm ashamed, I'm embarrassed. Tengo, estoy, tengo lástima, of tengo my de life, de mi vida, how I've been living, de cómo he what I've done, los cosas how I've hurt others, cómo he, he años, how I've hurt, hurt myself. Cómo me he a mí mismo. So you know, I feel, I feel guilty. Entonces me siento, me siento culpable. And so we carry, we Entonces, carry that load. Esto, And you know what, it's a heavy load. Nobody should have to carry that in their life. There's the load of fear. Fear is, is, is heavy. And it weighs heavy on your heart. And there are people, you know, that live in fear. And they're afraid of what's going to happen to them. How about the load of disappointment? Ahora, la carga de la, de, de la decepción. No, no, no. Disappointment. Decepción. Decepción. There's so many different versions. <laughs> Let's take a vote and see which one is it. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. <laughs> you know, we, we go through disappointment. Vamos por la decepción. You know, because choices that we made, por las, 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 oh, las opciones que tomamos, you know, didn't, didn't lead me to happiness. No me trajo a la, a la I thought I was going to be happy. Pensé que iba a ser feliz. I thought everything was going to work out. Pensé que todo iba a salir. But it didn't. Pero no fue así. How about the load of anger? ¿Qué tal la carga de la, de la ira? And suffering. Y el sufrimiento. And hopelessness. Y la, estar desamparado. But John chapter 8 verse 36 says this. Pero Juan 8, 36 dice esto. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free in tea. Jesus is able to remove Jesus is capaz de remover the burden of sin, las car las cargas del, del pecado, the fears, los temas, and the anger, y las iras. And, and, and the load of guilt and the suffering and the hopelessness. He is able to lift that load from us, allowing us to be free. It is for this reason es por esta razón, that Jesus came to this earth. Que Jesús vino a esta tierra. He, he didn't come to have a holiday. Él no vino a tener un día he didn't come to go to Disneyland. Él no vino a ir a Disney. okay. He came Él vino that we could be free. He came to free us. From all these things, 
the most important the most important to free us from the consequences of our of our sin which is total destruction yes destruction total jesus said Jesus dijo, I have come to preach the gospel yeah. to the poor. We were poor. If you don't have Christ, you're poor. You can have no money in your pocket. But if you have Jesus in your life, you're the richest person. You're the richest person. You're blessed. He came to preach to us poor people who didn't have Christ, who didn't have hope. He preached the gospel, the good news. Jesus said, I have come to kill the brokenhearted. I have come to preach deliverance to those who are captured. That their eyes might be open. <laughs> that they may experience <laughs> liberty, <laughs> freedom, <laughs> to know what it's like <laughs> to be released <laughs> from your burden. While we were sinners, pecadores, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Why did he do that? So that we would not live like birds in a cave. With no freedom. I don't know about you, but I'm no bird in a pain. I am no bird in a pain. I have been called to fly, to soar, to stretch my wings, to sing, to rejoice, to worship. I am no bird. Three days after Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says that Jesus resurrected. He came back to life. He rose again. That's what we're doing. Because he rose again. The same power that rose Jesus up from the dead. Is the same power that's going to free you. It's the same power that's going to break open the third cage. It's the same power that's going to raise you up from where you are at. My last question. As I, as I get ready to close, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? That, that's the big question. Here. It says this in 2 Corinthians. Chapter 3. We're going to go to verse 16. Okay. It's a little bit of a complicated verse. Well, I'm good at explaining complicated things. But I'm just going to explain it. We're going to make it real simple. Okay. Okay. And this is how it reads. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Pero cuando se convirtiera al Señor, el velo se quitará. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. Porque el Señor es el Espíritu. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, yeah. there is liberty. Yeah. Yeah. 
So here in verse 16 tells us what we need to do. When one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken. Pastor, what does it mean? What does it mean by veil? It's talking about a covering. A covering of your mind. That before we come to Christ, our minds are covered. Meaning that, that we can't see. Meaning that we cannot understand. We don't, come, we don't understand our sin. We can't see that this sin has, has made like a slave. I can't see that, that I'm a prisoner. Because living this way it just seems normal. Everyone lives like this. It's normal to feel these things. It's not normal to God. Because we were created to live in bondage of sin. And so when we turn to the Lord, he says, I remove that. Cuando vamos a enseñar, when that veil, when he has the veil, the things that are kept God is, and how much he loves you, and how much he wants to forgive you, I show his mercy, he removes that. And there's a word for that. It's called repentance. Because repentance means to turn around. I've been turned the wrong direction. I've been going the wrong way for too long. And I've got to turn around to the Lord. Let my mind be on God. Let my heart be with God. Let my thoughts be with God. Lord, I want to surrender my life, my heart, my mind, my life. I don't want to live like this. In a cage like a bird. When we turn to him, he removes. Verse 18. Listen to verse 18. I love 18. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So what this verse is, so it's like when we're not blinded, when we turn to God, when we remove that, that covering that has been keeping us in the dark, it's like looking at a picture and, and you're seeing the glory of God. For the first time, you're able to see. For the first time, you can see. When I see see, I'm talking about in your mind. When I say see, with your instrument, you can see. With your mind, how good God is. You can see His love, His mercy, His compassion, His forgiveness, His pardon. You can see that all that He is and what He died for. And, and when you be, look at him, 
And you see him for who he is and in all his glory. The Bible says that as you look upon him, that you begin to change. You begin to change. Your life begins to change. Because now your mind and your heart are really thinking about the things of God. And when we start thinking about the things of God, we begin to change. And it's like looking at the scripture. I see Christ. I see who he is. And all that, and, and everything he represents, and as you you, you see that in your mind, we are being transformed. We're being changed into that very picture. So one day, like a day, be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. I want to love like Jesus. I want to be forgiving like Jesus. I want to have compassion like Jesus. I want to be just like him. You understand exactly what I mean? Yeah. We just bow our heads for a moment. Lord, for just a moment. For just a moment. For just a moment. If we can just get a picture. Of who you are in my That in our life, God, that we can be free, really free, and behold who you are. That we may be transformed and becoming more and more like you. That's the goal for everybody. Is that we don't become like some famous movie actor or some famous, famous athlete. The Lord that we become like you. I think if we're really honest with each other, we all we all have something that we need to be free from. We all have something that we need to be free from. Maybe it's maybe it's something really small. Maybe maybe it's something really big. For example, what it doesn't matter. God cares. And even if I'm a little thing, and He can take care of the big things too. What we're going to do, we're going to open the altar. And we're going to allow everyone who wants to come to come and pray. And our coming to the altar is a symbol. Lord, I'm turning to you. I'm turning to you. Remove the covering that covers my mind. It covers my mind. Let me see the truth of who you are. Free me from my mind. Because every time we're bondage, takes place. Bondage is not when our hands are tied or our feet are tied. Bondage is in the mind. It's all right here. And then you can turn to him. He can release it. He can. I would invite you to this altar. This altar is so good. We have ministers here that will pray with you. 
This altar is open for everyone. Thank you.